So I got a few questions in our comments section recently, and I thought it'd be a good time to discuss nouns in Akkadian or just a basic feature that we don't really see in other Semitic languages, or maybe not so much. And so the questions are these, and they should both get answered through this little video. First one is, how do you explain the extra um? For example, Hebrew Nisan is in Akkadian Nisanum. What's the deal with that um? What's happening there? Then the second question, if the Canaanite and Akkadian languages were in our current era, how would loanwords such as YouTube, television, and the like be declined, I think? Um, verbs conjugate, so I think there was just a little uh, typo there, or brain fudge. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at these and just remember... You know, Hebrew is considered a Canaanite language. So if you want the answer to that part of the question, look at the way they, you know, use different loan words into Hebrew from any language, really. But they, they have a ton from Indo-European languages. And so it's pretty, pretty straightforward with that. Akkadian, we'll just look at what's going on there. So I've taken a couple words that are common to... Semitic languages, uh, Akkadian, Syriac, or Aramaic, uh, Hebrew, and Arabic. And um, you know, I figured we'd look at these just as our exemplars. Um, so we've got father and soul, right? So abum and napishtum in Akkadian. Now, that yields our Syriac abba. And so I have here the, <clears throat> the two different forms in which abba's is um, textualized. Sometimes it's with a hard B, other times with a soft B. That depends on the location, tradition, you know, and um, I don't know, maybe even context. If you're doing baby talk, it's probably Abba. If it's more formal, it may be more based on the writing itself, which if you look to the right, there's only one Beth there when you write Abba. You never write it with two. So usually the doubled B in transliteration just indicates that that one single B is a hard B and not a soft V sound. So B has, or Beth, the letter Beth, has two sounds, B as in B in English or Latin characters, and then V like V. And that's kind of what we see with Hebrew, and that's why the B is underlined in the transliteration there. So if you want to say the father in Hebrew, it's ha'av, Arabic alab. So... Same, let's look real quick at the words napishtum, uh, nafsho, or nosha uh, in Syriac, in Hebrew, hanefesh, in Arabic, anafs. So these are all basically the same word. And you'll notice a couple different things happening um, between Hebrew, Arabic, and then Akkadian and Syriac. And that's in Hebrew and Arabic, we have these little particles fronted to those. That's the definite article. So if you look here, the definite article in Hebrew and Arabic is on the front. When we say definite article, it means the word the in English. But in Akkadian, it's on the end. Same with Syriac, it's on the end. So abum is abul. Napishtum, nafsho, or nosha. It depends on your accent. It could be abba as well. When you look at Akkadian, you see U-M instead of just the final vowel. Now, the vowel quality in Syriac depends on your location, whether it sounds more like an O or a, an A. It's originally a long A, an A sound. And that, you know, wherever that is in the mouth can articulate more to an O or an A. And that's just regional. It's a regional feature. So in Akkadian, we have um. Now, that's the nominative singular ending. And it consists of a U and an M. The M is eventually lost. So we'll have napishtu, abu. And that becomes much more common in most of our Akkadian literature. But, you know, we tend to learn Akkadian by first studying Old Babylonian because the rules are pretty straightforward. And then what we see as, you know, those features diverging from those rules are easier to teach as a divergence rather than something static in the language, right? And so there's reasons for those shifts or changes uh, that happen. So that M is called mimation. It's a feature 
of the language that just ends in an m sound. It's kind of like a, a closing of a syllable. You could think of it that way. And eventually that's lost. So you have abu and napishto. That doesn't just mean father. It means the father, right? The soul. Now, I didn't write the, the definite article, in the translation specifically because I wanted to highlight it and show you that it is part of the word, but it isn't necessary to the way we translate it. In fact, you can translate in, especially in Akkadian and Aramaic, right? You can translate these words as the father or father. And this is a type of noun called a noun in the emphatic state. We also have absolute forms of the nouns, which look more like Hebrew and Arabic without the articles um, attached, okay? So to answer question one, why do we see the um on all these Akkadian nouns? Well, it's a, it's just a feature of the noun in the emphatic state and more often than not reflects the definite article. So if you were making new nouns, right? Question two here. If you were making new nouns, you would just use this um as the final ending. So maybe we could say YouTubeum, televisionum, something like that. I thank you guys for those questions. They're a great learning opportunity for something we may take for granted. Once we start studying Acadia and they're kind of on all the vocab, you know, in the singulars. And so, you know, it's it's natural. But if you're doing a different Semitic language and you're comparing it with Akkadian, uh, what's going on here? Why is it doing that? Well, here's your answer. So to everybody, thank you very much for watching and all your questions and comments. Go ahead, do the algorithmic duties, like, share, subscribe. And feel free to continue commenting and questioning. Thank you for your interest in this language, the Akkadian language, the language of the ancient Assyrian and Babylonian people, the language of ancient Iraq and beyond Iraq's borders. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.